Hey everyone, it's your girl Jen. I just checked into my hotel in Vegas. I'm here for the Revolve Awards and I wanted to do this first because we've got some unfinished business. I am two months behind on the monthly favorites. I'm not proud of this. Since we are covering two months, it's kind of a girthier video. We've got a lot of beauty, we've got some skincare, books, a TV show. So let's just get started. I gotta talk about the Pat McGrath Mothership Palette. You guys have seen this in a couple of my videos before. I've been shouting it out, but it's because this has been my favorite palette to travel with and for every day. It's got a total of 10 beautiful shades. Pat McGrath knows how to nail down the pigmentation, the packaging, and just knows how to make things quite universal. So one of my favorite colors is this pink shimmery shade over here. I mean, I would say it's a little bit more heavier than a shimmer. It's kind of like in between a shimmer and a glitter. So this has been my jam lately. These two colors on the left side have been great toppers. I'll just use any sort of, you know, brown or even olive eyeshadow. And once I top these babies on there with my finger, it's like boom, completely elevated. And every time I wear this palette, people are always dying to know what I'm wearing on my eyes. It's a combination of everything on here. I think I'm gonna do maybe two eyeshadow looks with this one palette in a video. So please, Stay tuned for that. Moving on to cheeks, I need to chat about this palette from Hourglass. This is their Lighting Edit Unlocked. There are a total of six shades in here, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I don't really use the two press powders. I mean, I've got my own powders that I absolutely love, but it's nice that they're there, just in case I forget to pack one. So the stars of the palette are definitely these three colors here. These bottom two are blushes, and this one is a highlighter. I'm just a sucker for salmon shades, so that's why this blush has been a great everyday color. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now. I love pigmentation, but for blushes, I kind of need it to be buildable because when I use like a super pigmented blush, I tend to go overboard and then I'm like, oh great. But for these colors, I never have to worry about that. It's just so buildable and it's hard to mess up with this palette. So this is great for people who tend to overdo things with makeup. Now for lips, I gotta shout out Fenty Beauty's Stunna Lip Paints. They came out with four new shades, but my favorite has been this one called Unbuttoned and another one called Unveil. So Unbuttoned is just like, you know, my go-to lip color because it's that perfect salmon-y coral shade. It is my perfect and ideal nude. I am actually rocking it on my lips right now. I love using this color because it complements any sort of eye look that I do, whether it's heavy, whether it's light. It's just a great everyday color. When I want a little bit more of a voo I'll use Unveil. This is kind of like a chocolate brown on me and I really like this for the fall and the winter because it kind of gives you that vampy kind of edgy look and it gives you that. It goes on buttery soft and then it dries like a in a comfortable matte. It doesn't leave your lips super flaky. That's just not my jam. I like mattes that can be worn throughout the day. With Unveil, I must say, I do reapply maybe every two or three hours, but that's pretty much expected for a darker shade. Also, for some reason, I dig this applicator. It's kind of like, I don't know, like a horse hoof. So it's got a little bit of an angle, but it has enough surface area where you can just swipe it on your lips and you're ready to go. For skincare, I wanna chat about Then I Met You. One of my very good friends, Charlotte, launched this skincare company. She has put her heart and soul into it, so I'm so freaking proud of her that it's finally out. She came out with a cleansing duo. So first we've got the Living Cleansing Balm. And so this is an oil-based cleanser where you just put it on your face dry and it just melts all the makeup off. After I've gotten the first layer of makeup off with this, then I'll go in with the Soothing Tea Cleansing Gel. This makes sure that all the makeup on my face is officially gone, so that way when I apply you know, all my skincare, my serums, my oils, it all seeps in. I would say if you're the type to wanna to avoid any parabens or artificial coloring or scents, this duo might be something that may interest you. So now I wanna feature an author that I've been absolutely loving. I wanna chat about Jillian Flynn. By the way, I'm sorry for calling her Gillian Flynn in my previous video. I had no idea, but thank you for correcting me. So I've been on a Gillian Flynn kick all month. I first read Sharp Objects because I was kind of itching for like a good thriller, especially after I read Something in the Water. It was so disappointing and lackluster. So I was like, hey, I hear Gillian Flynn's really good. Let me try her. 
I read Sharp Objects in two days. One of those books that I literally couldn't put down. I love how all the characters are so dark and twisted and you kind of just want to know why they are the way they are. She has a brilliant way of just really taking you through all these twists and turns and I always feel very satisfied with the endings. Then I listened to Dark Places on Audible which made my travel to New York so simple and effortless. Literally went over like that. And then after I finished Dark Places, I was like, Ugh, I need more Jillian Flynn. So I read her short story called A Grown Up. And even though it was super short, I finished it in 30 minutes. There were excerpts of that book that I absolutely loved, especially like her notes on inside jokes and just like feeling sad. So after I exhausted all my Jillian Flynn options, I knew I had to start Gone Girl. I was kind of avoiding Gone Girl because I saw the movie and then I was like, oh, I already know what happens. So I'm reading the book right now. I am enjoying it, but I'm still very peeved that I already know what happens. I feel like if I could be an author, I would want to take her writing style because she just has a really good way of developing the characters and I feel like anything that I have an opinion on, especially with people, she's able to like write them in like an elevated, cohesive way. So yeah, I know I didn't really get into all the storylines for all the books. It's just because I just wanted to praise Jillian Flynn as her own whole favorite category. If you guys have any recommendations of authors that are similar, please let me know because I've definitely found my favorite like book category now. I'm taking like a break from sci-fi and really zoning into like murder mysteries. <laughs> I started a new TV show in October. It is called Maniac. It's on Netflix right now. I saw it on the billboard first, but I was not very convinced. I was kind of skeptical. But after two of my good friends told me that I would love it, I was like, okay, gotta give it a try. And lo and behold, I love the show. It is incredible. It follows two strangers who partake in this pharmaceutical trial because this company has created like a series of pills that are supposed to help any sort of trauma or or mental illnesses you may have. And so they're basically like testing it out to see like how it works. And so unfortunately, things do not go as planned. And But then again, if everything went swimmingly, it wouldn't really be a TV show. It's like if Black Mirror and Eternal Sunshine had a baby, it would be this show. I would highly recommend this to anyone who enjoys watching plot lines that are a little bit more cerebral, or if you just enjoy things about mental health and illnesses too, I think this might be something that you may want to watch. So my favorite movie in September is called Searching. I saw it in theaters. It features John Cho, who is such an amazing actor. He is definitely doing a great job representing the Asian Americans in traditional media. And I feel like Searching really went under the radar. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this movie and it makes me very upset because I thought it was so good. I would say that this movie definitely goes on one of my favorite movies that I saw this year. It follows a Korean American family and the daughter ends up going missing. So the dad is basically searching for her. I love that it was filmed in such a unique way. Everything had to be through a screen, whether it's your phone or you know a laptop, a webcam, all that stuff. And it was able to kind of pull in the pieces and tell a story in a really engaging and suspenseful way. I just really enjoy being on the edge of my seat for things. That's the way I enjoy being stimulated. I really feel like this film did not get the credit that it deserves, especially regarding Asian representation in traditional media. I feel like with other movies that have been out, it kind of caricaturizes Asian people, but with searching, it's just like a normal Korean American family looking for their daughter. We're not exaggerating, we're not playing on any stereotypes. It's just a family and I feel like it humanizes us a lot more than it than the other films have. And I'm not trying to downplay any particular movie, but I just feel like searching would have been a better kind of poster child of how Asian Americans can be on screen. But that's just my personal opinion, but I thought I would just throw it in there. So regardless, I really, really hope that you guys get a chance to watch this film. I don't think it's in theaters anymore, but once it's out to rent, please go watch it. So my last favorite I have for you guys is a podcast. It is called Ologies and I heard about this from my grem, Stephanie. So basically the host, Ali Ward, talks to specialists on different fields, whether it's about 
Fear or Mars or Egypt and she asks them a bunch of questions that you've ever wanted to know about the subject and she does it in a very engaging way. She's really hilarious. She uses a bunch of sound effects. It's very informative. I love that I always leave with something new in my brain and I like that I always learn about something random too. Like a couple of topics I kind of avoided because I was like I'm not going to be interested in snails but I listened to the snail episode and now I have a, a deep appreciation for them. I love that she's able to get anything, any subject, and make you be involved and invested in it as well. All right guys, that is a wrap on all my favorites. I wanted to run something by you guys before I left. So I was thinking, instead of doing a favorites, should I just do like a review on everything that I've tried on that month? Because I feel like it's getting kind of one dimensional of me just being like, I like this and I like this. I don't know, I feel like maybe you guys would feel better if I talked about things that I didn't enjoy either. The reason why I never talked about things I didn't enjoy was because I didn't want to like press on anyone's toes. But you know, then again, it's just my opinion. So I think if I make that clear, I would love to talk about just like books that I've read that I didn't find fascinating and products that I tried that were very lackluster. I don't know. I think you guys would be interested in that because I read like a ton of books that didn't make it to the cut. I don't know. I've just got like a bunch of random information that I feel like I'm not communicating to you guys. So let me know if you guys are interested. Other than that, I hope you guys have a gorgeous rest of the day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Mwah.